please welcome CEO of Hyperloop, Rob Lloyd. Thank you very much. My name's Rob Lloyd. I'm the chief executive of a Los Angeles-based startup called Hyperloop One. Everything you just saw in that video has been accomplished uh, in the last 24 months here in Los Angeles and just north of Las Vegas. So what I want to talk about today is a little bit about how this new mode of transportation that we're developing fits together with this increasingly autonomous world that we all live in. I don't think it takes much for us uh, to recognize that our transportation networks just aren't keeping up. They're falling behind. The experiences that we all live every day say that the transportation infrastructure, not in just, just in this country, but around the world, isn't living up to our expectations. Uh, some of it's based on two-century-old technology. Some of it's the experience is rotten, uh, sometimes demeaning. We see our supply chains clogged in ports and roads across the world, costing companies hundreds of billions of dollars of inefficient product in the supply chain. And we're moving to an on-demand economy, but the infrastructure that we're providing is very far from supporting that movement of a just-in-time, on-demand world that we all expect to live in. And then finally, we're building massive billion-dollar shopping centers around our airports to help you forget that you actually went to the airport trying to catch a flight, it's been delayed, or you had to leave so early to get there that you have to have something else to do. So what we really are looking at is a new mode of transportation, one that links up very well with the innovation that's going on in last-mile technology like automobiles, and other technologies that we all rely on so much to get to our final destination. So what is this thing? Well, we call it a new mode of transportation because it really changes the entire game about transportation. Just take a look at the two cities, London, Manchester, one booming, one uh, property prices about the tenth of the price of a property in downtown London. It would cost you to live in the same property in Manchester. It's a four-hour car drive. It's a two-hour train ride. If they built it, it would be a one-hour high-speed train ride. And if we had a Hyperloop, it would be 20 minutes. If it was 20 minutes, you could live in Manchester, work in Cannery Wharf, and actually completely change the economic engine of an entire country by allowing us to have a job where we wanted uh, in any city uh, in a country around the world. And it really changes a lot of the definition that each of us hold in terms of cities, job opportunities, relationships we have with our family and with our friends. It also matters because our cities are full. And the idea that we require a much smaller footprint, we don't need a massive right-of-way to get a smaller infrastructure into a city, and we can blend together and connect with existing infrastructures. That's the center of Helsinki, where we could imagine a new portal, a new definition of a station, actually connecting with an existing train station or connecting to the, the air, airports as we expect in the future. So think of us connecting all modes of transportation and building a very high-speed backbone for that. And why should we be sitting side by side facing the same direction when, in fact, we could create entirely new experiences in the vehicles that, that move inside uh, this infrastructure, which I'll describe in a minute. Entirely new experiences that could include meetings, could include family time, could include medical uh, uh, pods that would take us directly and with very high speed uh, to specialized care units. So very briefly, for those of you that may not have heard what Hyperloop is, it has four basic physical components and one digital. The first is we take a tube, we remove much of the pressure. By removing the pressure, you, res you reduce the resistance and air pressure in front of a vehicle. We could call that a pod. The pod could carry either cargo or passengers. We levitate that pod off a, off a, 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 a non-magnetic surface, off a conductive surface, using passive magnetic levitation, which needs no energy, just motion, to create the levitation and we hit it really hard with a very powerful electric motor that allows us to achieve speeds of up to 1,200 kilometers an hour. No sound, very little resistance, no friction, relatively straight with a small footprint, into city centers in inexpensive tunnels, and above grade when we're, when we're uh, looking at right-of-ways in the country. And then a control system that actually controls all of that and builds a platform to interface with other modes of just-in-time and autonomous last-mile technology. 
So we've done a little bit of work here, and something that's been pretty exciting has been a study we've done in Northern Europe. Uh, I'm a Canadian, so I, I appreciate that these are very small markets. These are very small cities. Most of the people in Finland live in Helsinki, and most of the people in Sweden live in Stockholm. When you take a look at the cities that you see on that map, they're really relatively small. Uh, when you connect them all together, you create a very, very much more powerful economic region. Very smart people, uh, very hardworking people, but by b being able to connect Helsinki to, to Stockholm in less than half an hour, you could literally work, live, and, and, and be productive in any of those cities, and including the small cities along the way. This is a very powerful concept. It, re, it redefines a region of economic power. It redefines and creates new sub-regions that actually is very enticing and interesting to the governments of both, Hels of both uh, Sweden and Finland. You know, one of the things, uh, brand new metro lines here in Los Angeles, one of the things that frustrates us all, although you're only going a short distance, if you were taking a, a, a metro or a train from Abu Dhabi to Dubai, you stop. And then you go a little faster, then you stop. And actually, what really kills high speed is stopping all the time. And it's frustrating just to look at this little animation, but with Hyperloop, you build a two-way tube, one going towards Abu Dhabi from Dubai, one going from Dubai to Abu Dhabi, and we go point to point. If I want to go from Etihad Towers to the Dubai airport, uh, I'd only actually go to that destination. I don't stop along the way, but just like a packet in the internet, we route each pod and each, each container to, to its eventual destination. That means that we're absolutely able to, not only through the speed of the transportation, but by not stopping along the way, send smaller units of people or cargo to their eventual destination. And it really rewrites what we think about uh, in terms of fixed transportation systems. There should be no schedule. There should be no commitment to have to be a place in time. We should be able to order up the capability and then have much more frequent departure times uh, as we go forward. So we actually were in Abu Dhabi and Dubai last week. We announced this concept as to how we would apply this technology, starting in Dubai, connecting Abu Dhabi, looking for the most powerful routes of connecting some of those cities you see on this graphic. And uh, the basic infrastructure that we're discussing has a couple of building blocks. Start with the tube, and then inside of that tube, think of a, of a transporter. That transporter actually is where we would create the pressure-resistant reduction. We'd bring that up to an airlock, and we could put units, pods, inside that transporter. The transporter has the characteristics of an airplane. It maintains uh, re uh, uh, coverage against the, the re reduced pressure in the tube. And then inside of that transporter, we could put pallets, we could put containers, or we could put customized experiences of the pods that could travel inside that infrastructure. So that's the building blocks of Hyperloop. That's what our company is working on and developing today. And we spent a little bit of time in, in Dubai last week. Uh, we built something that would imagine how this could be deployed in that country. Uh, and I have a short video to, to help you understand it. So let's take a look. So as I mentioned earlier, we're really looking at something that should be on demand. This gentleman happens to be working in Abu Dhabi and right in the core of the, of the commercial area there, beautiful new building. And he gets a text from his wife, don't forget your mom's birthday you should be in Abu Dhabi, or in Dubai, sorry, in half an hour. So he goes to his application. We just heard this from the previous panel. Selects the most appropriate way. In this particular case, he's sitting very close to the station. He, just, he selects Hyperloop from his app, and then just goes from his office tower to a very closely located adjacent station. He enters the pod, as others would enter the pods, going to the destination that they've chosen. Each of those could be customized. That pod then locates itself uh, into these transporters, each one of those pods going only into the transporter for its destination. It enters the airlock. These are the building blocks that I just discussed, the pods, the tube, the, the, the levitation technology, the suspension, all of that actually uh, able to be contained inside that transporter. And then you enter into the tube. So we could imagine that going in just a matter of minutes. That's actually, I think, 12 minutes from Abu Dhabi to Dubai. I actually drove that the other day. It was one hour and 21 minutes when I went for a, a breakfast meeting, and fortunately, there were no accidents. So we could actually see ourselves moving very quickly. 
What's the experience going to be like? You're not going to be splattered back into a chair. Uh, you're moving very quickly, but with no resistance, no air turbulence. Uh, we actually can imagine a station right at the foot of Burj Khalifa where we announced this, uh, move, this uh, movement along with the regulator last week in Dubai. You come to the airlock, the pods exit. You might then depart there because you're actually, that's your eventual destination. We'll have a control system and control software that will manage how all of those systems are operating together. A new idea of a station multi-layered, very much in the city center rather than requiring massive platforms similar to a train station. And this particular guy actually wants to go to his uh, a place which is just down that hotel strip, stays in his vehicle, and uh, actually could enter and exit in the autonomous vehicle which joins the other uh, other vehicles in the area. So that's the vision we have for Hyperloop, connecting not just with uh, our own system uh, inside and outside of the environment, but with other last mile technologies as well. What do you think? Yeah. It's actually very cool. We're building a lot of this right now. We're building the, the, the fundamental uh, prototype right now, just north of Las Vegas. Uh, it'll be ready in the first quarter of next year, and it's a really, uh, really big thing, especially how quickly we've moved uh, in this direction. So does that mean we're going to build our own cars? Uh, are we in the car business? Are we in the infrastructure business? I can see us building city, uh, very uh, uh, important parts of the urban mobility solution with technology, but really our view here is that we will be partnering with many of the leaders, probably most of those leaders that you'll see and, and discuss uh, things with here, uh, think of us partnering with the car companies, think of us partnering with the transportation companies, with the logistics companies like DHL, with FedEx and others who would be wanting to move cargo more quickly, uh, and as well building our own experiences. So when I look at this, I see us working with an Amazon or a Tesla or, or a, a Mercedes or a Google and actually incorporating their software into many of the vehicles and even their vehicles into the transporter uh, that we build in the future. As I mentioned earlier, we're just a startup. 210 people working out of down downtown Los Angeles. I was there yesterday. 65 people now in Nevada. That will grow to 500 by the end of this year. We've raised $160 million of equity. We expect to raise uh, more in the very near future. Uh, and we're pretty excited about bringing something new to all of us to make it a much better place to, uh, to, to live and work, a much more sustainable environment with an all-electric and no-noise, low-footprint fo environment. And we really do think that we're just a very short period away from changing the world by introducing the fifth mode of transportation. So I'd like to thank you very much for allowing me to join you. It's been a pleasure. Uh, and uh, we'll be ready in 2021. If anyone wants to raise their hand, we'll have a ticket ready for you to ride a Hyperloop somewhere in the world. So thanks for your kind attention.